It's been said that the most valuable skill set anyone can acquire is the ability to communicate effectively and specifically the ability to influence and persuade other people to your way of thinking. Yet, most people that I talk to tell me that the idea of influencing and persuading other people feels challenging and sometimes even repulsive to them. Well, if you've experienced that, I have good news. In today's video, I'm going to share with you three simple persuasion tactics that anyone can use that actually work that you can feel good about. Hey guys, my name is Paul Massetta and I'm a researcher in the field of human communication. So if you like learning about things like human communication and influence and persuasion, then go ahead and consider subscribing. Guys, real quick, in the description of this video, I'm gonna hook you up with a free PDF. It is a sample edition of my book, The Street Persuasion Playbook, and in it you're gonna learn 10 underground tactics to influence people to your way of thinking. So. With that, let's jump into today's video. So oftentimes, if we really break down persuasion in its simplest form, we are attempting to get someone to think a certain way, act in a certain way, formulate an opinion. But ultimately, what we're doing is we're trying to influence some level of change in them. Now, if, if it didn't require a change or it didn't require us to influence and persuade them, then they would already be doing this thing. The, the process of influence and persuasion wouldn't be required. But obviously, there's some sort of a barrier there. And usually what the barrier is, is that the person that you're influencing and persuading doesn't quite see the payoff or the benefit that is in it for them. And so when that happens, you're going to encounter some sort of resistance. Now, there are lots of different reasons why people will resist you. But one of the biggest ones is they simply don't trust you. Not that they think that you are a liar or a scam artist, although in some cases that is what they think. But even on very minute levels, sometimes people just don't believe that the decision that you're asking them to make is the smartest decision. And so to combat that, what we need to do is showcase the fact that you do know what you're talking about and that the decision that you're asking them to make is in fact the best possible decision for them. And really the easiest way to do that is to establish credibility. But you need to establish this credibility before you even interact with this person if possible, because that is the best form of credibility. I call that preconceived credibility. This is when the prospect, the client, the customer, the audience already understands that you are the authority or expert on a specific topic or on the thing that you are presenting to them with the hopes of influencing or persuading them. The more credibility you have prior to going into the interaction, the less resistance you're gonna experience from your audience. So think about it. If I was contemplating getting a divorce, who would I go to first for advice? My best friend or a divorce lawyer? If I was needing medical surgery, heart surgery, what is the person that I would go to first? It would be a heart surgeon. In fact, I would go to a heart surgeon before I went to a general doctor. So the more specialized or niche your expertise or your authority is, the better. But the fact of the matter is, regardless of who I went to in any one of those situations, the fact is I'm going to be more likely to trust and listen to the experts in those particular fields. So for instance, I'm going to be more likely to listen to and comply with a divorce lawyer than I am to somebody that doesn't have any experience when it comes to divorces. I'm going to be more likely to listen and trust what a heart doctor tells me about my cardiovascular health than I am just a regular Joe Schmo or even a general doctor. 
for that matter. So the more credibility you have before you actually go into the interaction with the other person, the better. The next thing that you want to think about is how you can integrate both logical and emotional arguments. You see, human beings are both emotional and logical creatures, but the reality is we actually operate emotionally most of the time. Now, most people will tell you that that's not true, that they are logical, systematic thinkers who scrutinize things and make the best logical decisions based on a long thought out thought process when they make decisions. But the reality is nothing could be further from the truth. Most people are operating emotionally most of the time. The reason why is it preserves cognitive power. You see, if we had to logically scrutinize and think about every single decision that we had to make, we would suffer from a cognitive overload and our brains would shut down. So instead, the human mind uses heuristics, shortcuts, and feelings to really decide which way we're going to go in certain paths of life. Now, even the most logical, well-thought-out decisions are still backed by an emotion. When you decide to do something, no matter how logical it is, it's because you believe that that decision is going to lead to some sort of a feeling, whether it is leading to a positive feeling or it is avoiding a negative feeling. You see, if we break down the reasons why almost everybody does what they do, it's either to experience pleasure or to avoid pain. And both of those things are tied to emotions. So you need to constantly be thinking about what emotions do I want to trigger during this interaction? Which emotions do I want to lead people towards? And which emotions do I want to steer people away from? But at the same time, you can't just operate strictly on an emotional level because there is logic involved and people need to use logic to be able to make sense of the decisions that they make. You see, the worst thing you could do is influence somebody strictly based on emotion and build them up into a high emotional state and then get them to say yes and then not use any logic because what's going to happen is once that emotional state lowers and comes back down to its baseline, that person is going to start thinking logically. And if you haven't given them any logical reasons to do what you're asking them to do, they're going to experience remorse and they're going to regret having that interaction with you and they're going to regret their decision and as a result, they're going to resent you. So you need to be able to think about where do I want to lead them emotionally, but how can I integrate logic into this interaction so that when that emotional state comes down later, they have the logic to justify why they made the decision. And then the last thing is to integrate scarcity however you can. The fact of the matter is that people are attracted to things and they find things more valuable as they become less available. As something becomes less available, the human mind tends to want it even more. And so a very simple way to influence or persuade someone is to integrate some level of scarcity into the interaction. Now, the key is you want to use genuine scarcity. So maybe the opportunity for them to act is truly limited. Maybe there's a limited quantity of the thing that you're selling or presented to them. Maybe there's a, a, a limited amount of spaces that are available to partake in the opportunity. Or maybe there are some external circumstances that legitimately justify a reason why they need to act now. Here's what you need to understand. Persuasion involves change. Most of the time, human beings are resistant to change. And if they don't have a reason to change now, they will likely put it off and change later. And oftentimes, in that putting off process, their state of mind might actually shift and go somewhere else. And then they might actually change their decision. So the sooner you get someone to act and make a decision, 
the better. And scarcity is one of the most effective ways to do that. So always be thinking about how can I limit this? How can I restrict this? How can I shorten the time frame or the window of opportunity for them to act? But how can I do it in a legitimate way where I'm not sacrificing my integrity? Guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave me a comment. If you like this type of co content, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you get updated when I release more videos like this. And like I said, check the first link in the description. I'm gonna hook you up with a free sample edition of my book, The Street Persuasion Playbook. Go ahead, grab it, download it now, and enjoy it.